Let's speak to Gregory Johnson, a Yemen analyst at uh, Princeton University. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, it's interesting there's a lot of debate about just how important Alaki was to uh, al-Qaeda. Do we have any uh, sort of hard facts about this? I mean, certainly the U.S. think he was an extremely high priority target. Right. There's basically two things going on here. First, Anwar al-Awlaki is not the leader of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. He's not the most dangerous individual within the organization. There are members of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula who are still alive and still at large that I think present a much greater danger for new U.S. national security than Anwar al-Awlaki. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, his death is in no way a debilitating blow for the organization. What Anwar al-Awlaki was unique is in the fact that he carried American citizenship, that he spoke fluent and idiomatic English, and so he inspired what are often called lone wolf terrorists. And this is where he's irreplaceable for al-Qaeda. But I think there's an open question as to whether Anwar al-Awlaki sort of pushed these lone wolf terrorists like Nadal Hassan or the Times Square bomber over the edge, or whether he just reinforced their beliefs. That is, would they have carried out the shooting at Fort Hood or attempted the bombing in Times Square without Anwar al-Awlaki? And that's still very much an open question. Uh, you say it's not going to be a, a debilitating blow for al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. It's interesting that uh, sources are now reporting uh, al-Qaeda, sources are saying he's not dead. So presumably uh, they feel that there is some damage to mitigate. Right. Well, what we have is the U.S. has claimed on numerous occasions previously that it has killed Anwar al-Awlaki. Um, one of the first times was in December of 2009. Um, obviously, those claims turned out not to be true. But what we have so far is a number of confirmations um, from people both in the U.S. government and the Yemeni government that Anwar al-Awlaki is, in fact, dead. Um, the problem is, is that where he was killed in al-Jof is in the far north of the country, near the border with Saudi Arabia. It's desert. It's very sparsely populated, and so getting confirmation on the ground is very difficult. And I think that's some of the conflicting reports that we're seeing coming out of Yemen right now. Okay, and we're also getting reports that uh, he, he was he was killed by the same unit that uh, that found Osama bin Laden. I mean, uh, if there was U.S. involvement on foreign soil uh, in that way, it is going to reopen the debate uh, on extrajudicial killings by the U.S. Absolutely. The fact that Anwar al-Awlaki was an American citizen, um, as well as Samar Khan, who's, uh, who is reported to have been with Anwar al-Awlaki, is also an American citizen. So that opens that debate. And the Obama administration and the U.S., I think, finds itself in a very interesting position. There appears to have been some Yemeni cooperation on the raid. So does President Obama and the U.S. publicly thank President Ali Abdullah Saleh of Yemen, a leader that the U.S. has asked to step down? Or do they ignore the Yemeni cooperation and risk putting future counterterrorism operations at, at risk? Yeah, that's I think an the interesting, U.S. is in a very difficult position. It's an interesting position. question, because I was going to ask you whether President Saleh uh, was now going to make some mileage out of this and try and change uh, his relationship with the U.S. Absolutely. I mean, President Saleh is an individual who has survived 33 years in a very rough and tumble political world. And certainly he's going to try to use the death of Anwar al-Awlaki in a way that benefits him the most. And what President Saleh has been saying since early this year, since February, when the protests and the uprising started, is that he is an indispensable ally for the U.S. in the war against al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And he is going to use the death of Anwar al-Awlaki to say, see how important I am. Do you really want me to leave power? Do you really want to deal with the breakdown in government that's going to come after I leave office? And that, I think, is, is a very powerful argument that Saleh is going to try to convince the U.S. and the West of. Really interesting to speak with you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Gregory Johnson there speaking to us from Princeton University.